Hello, everyone. Hey. Hey, everybody. Everybody, minutes to join as always. This meeting is being recorded. Does anybody know if this meeting is being recorded? <laughs> and for those on the call, uh, please do. Um, Add your name to the the agenda doc. Which I will simultaneous now. It's not already someone already did. Thank you, Dan. So uh, there's a, a few um, perhaps shorter, well, maybe less substantial. We'll see how short they are. Uh, uh, topics that I have in the agenda doc. We have a number of things identified, um, I think, last time as more meaty topics. Um, and um, But let's see how much time we or how much we can get through on these other ones first. Okay, uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, Osama, uh, you had put yourself down for um, for a short topic here. Um, do you want to yeah, go ahead and introduce? Sure, sure. Yeah. So, so basically, um, we are basically planning an event on formal methods as well as attestation. So, we want to invite both communities to get together and see what are the advances in attestation in confidential computing, specifically, and also on the formal method sites. Um, some things related to attestation and also other approaches that have been used in confidential computing in general. So the overall idea at a high level is confidential computing and the specific focus will be on attestation and it's uh, definitely then uh, going to be of interest for the folks here. And I was wondering if um, some sub projects would also like to present and that was something that I just wanted to float if so, so we are planning in Dresden in person and roughly in the beginning of February to March. So, so it will be somewhere around that time period. And we do have some fundings. If someone is interested, we can also, uh, within Europe, not from US, it would be very hard. So if you have your own funding source, of course, you are very welcome. So yeah, that was basically a short invitation to all. Uh, we will organize the things and of course, announce it formally as well. Um, but if someone is interested, for instance, one specific thing in my mind was um, we are inviting, uh, of course, from from one sub project, which is which is myself and um, people from ARM, and the other sub project, which is uh, mostly people from ARM. So we are uh, very much like in touch. But I'm not sure what's the status of the third project. I haven't seen in the recent meetings 
that being presented i'm not sure if it's being continued or if it's being pursued uh, specifically if uh, like people from the third project like the uh, i think harmonization of tls something like this was the topic so uh, dan or someone else if he has some opinion or somebody who can join or present that would be very nice and, and uh, who's putting on this event so basically it's uh, by europeproofnet and we will be organizing it uh, in tu dresden okay um you said it was uh, what group uh, so I, I can add in the net, uh, in the chat or in the document yeah in the, in the notes in the, yeah, the meeting and that would be great europeproofnet who is ah i think okay can you also Great. put the dates in? Sorry, I'll support what? Uh, the dates of the event. Uh, so, so the dates are not yet decided. We are finalizing on that. And that was something if someone from, let's say, uh, the third project, for instance, Intel is interested in presenting. So we can, we are, we are still coordinating, like what is the best time to, to coordinate so far? It's going to be roughly from the start of February to the start of March. Roughly, that's something that we have, uh, let's say, shortlisted. Uh, but we are open to any time inside that window, which is which is most people are likely to be available here. Okay, thanks for the heads up on that. I'll uh, poke around and see if somebody would be available in that time frame. Um, the uh, the harmonization of the RATLS protocols doesn't have a formal methods uh, component to the scope. Is that some? I, I gather that's sort of no, no. The, part of the so. So that's part. not that. That's not a requirement. I mean, it's formal methods and attestation. So separate things together. So the idea is to bring together the two communities for a couple of days to discuss the things to present and to. Uh, like of course for for the other project that's uh, the the other sub project from ARM. That's uh, the one component, subcomponent is the formal verification, but we have, uh, uh, we are still in the process of doing that. That's also not completed. So uh, just to clarify, formal methods is not a requirement. We are trying to get together the two communities to discuss the problems and to, to, to uh, define further research agenda on what what are the problems to be researched and further worked upon so so if someone is let's say uh, presenting on attestation that's perfectly fine we will get together to discuss uh, uh, the intersection of the two things together thank great thank you osama um when would you need to know from people um on on potential uh presentations or I guess we have presentations uh if it's within two weeks that would be very nice we need to finalize the dates within two weeks and of course then afterwards we will have a formal invitation when the dates are finalized so um then it's uh they have to book the lecture halls or something like some place for the meeting and so on so there are some formal things to be done so it would be nice to have uh, by two weeks. Thanks. Okay, great. Okay, so the next thing I had, I know um, I don't see Hank here, um, but he was um, asking in the chat this morning about an update on the IAB response. Um, I know that there's been some pre-work done um, between some of the members of, of this SIG and the Triple C TAC. Uh, Chris, uh, do you mind giving an update of where we're at there and maybe showing a, a preview? Uh, not at all. Let me uh, get get that out. Um, so, yes, we put together a draft, um, and several folks um, from the attestation SIG provided input, um, as well as several folks from the technical advisory committee. Uh, um, I feel like the draft is in pretty good shape. Um, the technical advisory committee was hoping. Uh, uh, to bring it to the attention of the board for their vote, I think this week. Um, so we wanted to uh, dot the I's on that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble finding the link. Give me just a second here. Um, anybody has it already? That would be yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you put throw it in the chat for folks? Yeah. Um, 
so the the technical advisory board um, had a discussion about like who should um, the letter be from, um, which I believe should be. Uh, they decided it should be from the technical advisory committee. But if this committee disagrees with that, that's uh, that's probably open for discussion. Um, and uh, the open issues. There are two sort of open issues. I think one is a terminology issue. Uh, there's a debate about um, whether or not the term attestation has been previously reserved by other communities that use it in a in a looser um, sense uh, of organizational trust, um, as opposed to the you know the technical definition that the confidential computing community uses. So that's one open issue, um, and I'm hoping that uh, folks can sort of reach out to people in the software supply chain community or in the compliance community to see if the, to sort of test drive the language and see if um, the issue is one that uh, um, needs to be addressed in the letter. Um, so at present, the default is to address it in the letter. And uh, I know that's not everybody's, uh, I, I don't I know it's not a universal consensus. Um, there's, a, there's, um, I think that well, actually maybe that's the major issue. Um, there's there's one other uh, open question about whether or not the letter addresses um, some of the subtleties that are involved in a response. My feeling is that it does, um, but uh, there's there's a little bit of an open back and forth between a few people on that topic. So um, I don't know, Dan. Um, did you have anything to add from a from a TAC perspective? Yeah, I guess just from from uh, timelines, we've got a TAC meeting coming up on, I think it's the second, which is a couple of days before the IAB meeting. And the request is that we get this response in ahead of the IAB meeting on the fifth. So I think our, our best chance of getting a uh, TAC approval is November 2nd. So that we should be finalized with the content before then so that people are ready to vote. I informed the board about this timeline in the, the monthly meeting last night. And uh, they understood that there's not gonna be, um, you know, a time frame where the TAC votes and then the board votes. So we're gonna send something to both lists uh, that just conveys that the board should be tracking the ongoing conversation so that when the TAC approves it, there's sort of implicit approval from the board because they've had all the opportunity to be in touch with their TAC members. Yeah, I'm just, I just opened the document and it looks like um, there's some new comments in there from Kafir and Manu that we'll need to address as well. Um, uh, yeah, so I saw those this morning and I took another look at things. I, I think we're like probably like 80% good with the document, but I went back and I looked at context. Uh, I hadn't seen any of the, um, uh, what is it called? The web environment integrity discussion on the mail list. I do see it in the, the meeting notes here. So I hadn't clued into that in the, the minutes here. But it seems like that's sort of the central problem is that they're reacting to that specific thing in a very general way. And so I, I commented on, on lists uh, a few thoughts about that. On what specific thing in a general way? Can you clarify? So it seems to me upon rereading this that the IAB is just reacting to this protocol proposal and they're reacting to that specific proposal, but they're using generalizations in doing it. And I think our response should be helping them understand that their generalizations are, are probably harmful. And that if they have, you know, specific beef with this proposal, they ought to just respond about the proposal and not make generalizations without defining terms. And this proposal being the web in, uh, environment integrity? Right. Because when I look through that, it's all the language about signals and attestation in that context. And I think at least I was first reading their response with our rats frame in mind. 
and they make that more of a problem because they specifically mention rats. So they've they've created they, they've conflated terms and you know everything that we already have in that document in in the response. Um, but I'd like to see if there's some way that we can make our response a little bit more concise and and think about this uh, WEI context. This web environment integrity context that they're responding from. And, and, and Dan, what's 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 remind me again? What's the deadline by which that needs to be done in order to hit the uh, the board meeting? So in order to hit the TAC meeting on November second, we would want to have things locked down as soon as possible before next Thursday. Next Thursday being um, in two days or in uh, nine days. Right. Not next Thursday. The Thursday follow next week's next Thursday. Next week's November next November second is the TAC meeting. Oh, yeah. so which is uh, okay. So we need we have nine days to sort out these matters. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think nine days to get it to a point that it can be approved on the second. Right. Um, so um, not not just discussed on the second. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's the actual meeting. So we need. So in other words, I, I feel like we should try and uh, lock by the end of this week. We should try and have something locked down. Mm -hmm. um, that seems reasonable. Yeah. And no, no, no reason to let the grass grow under our feet here. And and based on what you were saying, Dan, um, like we should probably be clear on what the like the the goals of the response are um if it is clarification that's one thing if it's rebuttal that's another and if it's actually like putting forth an argument of value of attestation like that's something else um and we could probably make it more concise if if we really were crisp on our goal um of the response yeah, so I think that's a good way to frame it so i'll in in a note that I sent to the lists this morning, I'll just paste this in the chat here. Uh, that's my proposed goal statement, the problem statement and goal. Okay. So um, I, I, I guess I'm sort of thinking that it's also an opportunity to educate the broader community. I mean, if people notice this little controversy, um, you know, it's a chance to give people the language to think about why attestation is valuable. Um, and so that could be an overlay on this. I you know, open to your, your thoughts on that. So a uh, general like general education, you know, if, if there were some other place we had a summary of things and that this could just be a pointing to it, that would seem appropriate. But I'm not sure if we have that and, and, and putting it all in this letter uh, could distract some from the main point, uh, which is, you know, that you're drawing a distinction between what the IAB is reacting to and uh, what we think they should be reacting to um, or how how it should be um, um, interpreted. Um, so I, I, I get, you know, from what Dan was saying, I think he, he lost his internet connection, can't respond himself here. Um, but um, I think it's a good point um, that if their reaction is to a specific instantiation and in policy, then then really leaning in on what we had talked about on the list with um, it's not the mechanism that you have a um, contention with. It's a specific instantiation of policy. Um, and, you know. Allowing them or I guess. Get them rambling a bit here. What, what are your thoughts? So I, just a comment, I did not see any documentation um, on the CCC site about attestation that seemed uh, right that I could point to. Um, it might be there and I just missed it. 
Um, I'm still pretty new yeah, to this. No, I like uh, as I was saying. I'm not sure we have that. Um, um, it would it would be uh, it's probably too late to create one. Um, but whether or not in in lack of having something to point to, whether it would be better to have it missing or or adding it to this, I think is what Dan is is um, was commenting on. Okay, so um, in general, though, um, so the discussion around this, um, you know, the we the the doc was posted here in the chat and in the agenda, um, getting people's attention on it so that we can come to a um, kind of steady state on it, you know, or at least uh, conceptually locked down on what the the message is going to be uh, by the end of this week. I think is is the the target that was expressed so that we could have it finalized for final approval next Thursday. So so I'd love everybody's eyes on this document. You know, this week, uh, the earlier the better. Um, in case there are any other issues, uh, and I guess um, you know, I need to work. Uh, well, I don't know if if I should be the edit main editor of this or not, but um, I want to work closely with Dan as the lead for the. Uh, for the TAC, if that if the TAC is going to be the signatory, just to make sure that I'm aligned with um, the way uh, the TAC wants to think about this. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Osama, did you have something to add? Yeah, so 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 I would like to add my perspective. I also wrote on the list. So uh, what I see missing in the in the in the three pager is. Uh, to, exactly the point what we want to make. So, so that's not very precisely clear. So I would like to know what does the CCC basically want to get out of this? Is it is it getting uh, them to, is it kind of pushing the opinion of the ITF folks up to them through a different channel? Is it is it that the objective? So then we should focus on different thing or is it that the CCC wants to give its own pure opinion related to the confidential computing community, how this statement of IAB could be harmful or could be misinterpreted from confidential computing perspective, I would suggest the later because the former has already been done on the ITF rights working group. It doesn't make sense to push that opinion through these this uh, using CCC as a as a secondary thing. So, so I would suggest that the second second thing should be our focus. And that should then be focusing really on the confidential computing thing. So, so how is that um, uh, statement basically related to the confidential computing and confidential computing consortium, specifically the members of the community, like uh, what do they interpret and so on? So I don't find that statement to be, uh, let's say the response, not the statement that, that the response to be very precise on that and giving general definitions or what other people's use or let's say the supply chain use that's not very directly relevant to what a response could be. Or, or I would like to be, uh, somebody can maybe convince me that, that why we are mentioning that some supply chain community uses this definition that nothing that's nothing to do for the, uh, let's say the confidential community. The second thing is they are from the very first statement, very first, uh, let's say sentence up to the very last sentence, 12 times using the precisely the client side, client side, client side from the very first statement up to the last statement. I also mentioned it last time, but the response is not very precise on that. So, so it's, um, so, so, so somehow these are my, my two main concerns, uh, which I think would, if, if we are more precise about that, that would be more effect, effective. So, so what I'm hearing you say, Osama, and, and I, I think I, I've, I've come to, to agree is that our response to this should be less a criticism of their statement and more um, a, a clarification from our perspective so that if we have people like pointing to the IAB statement, we can point to this and say, yes, have you also read this in order to get the full context? Is, is that um, accurate, Osama? Yeah, but the focus should be focus of the response should be from confidential computing perspective and not yes. what let's say the supply chain community thinks, what the other communities think, what the other supply chain uh, 
uh, stakeholders are thinking it should be very purely focused on confidential computing because the statement is actually coming from the CCC. It happens, yes. it just happens by chance that there are some common people who are also in the ETF, who are also in the CCC attestation SIG, but that's just by chance. It's not that the, the statement should not, I mean, seem to come out of these people originated and just biasing the opinion to, 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 to lead to this statement. That's my only concern at the moment. I, I I I appreciate that point of view, um, but I just want to offer uh, um, an alternative point of view that within the confidential computing community, everybody already knows what attestation is for and what to do with it. And the point of issuing a statement has to be to uh, to educate people who are not already. <laughs> that might um, completely misinterpret what the mm -hmm. IA So it seems to me like it is important to recognize um, how other communities may be using this term. Software supply chain and compliance seem, um, you know, I, I checked with somebody at, at, at VMware that, um, you know, deals with some of those uh, other communities. And it does seem like there is an alternative definition in use. I would really appreciate if more people here could reach out to uh, you know their contacts in other communities to see what is the ground truth on how people are using the phrase attestation. So I, I think we can kind of, I, I would like to treat that as a separate topic. I actually have it in the agenda as a separate topic here. Um, like if in our response, we can clarify our definition or what we view as the scope of attestation and and, and you know, clarify that, and not focus really on on other uh, uses of the term attestation. Um, and then I think for outreach, like that's a valuable thing in itself. Like with um, amongst the different parts of the industry at large, having a common understanding of what attestation in will is will help consumers um, understand um, you know the the different market segments because they're interacting with all of them. We can kind of be pigeonholed or kind of focused on one area, whereas, you know, end consumers have to deal with all of it and having different meetings is confusing. Um, but I, I don't know that the IAB response is the place to do that. Just raising it for consideration. No, no, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, but I, I, I did, I did actually want to talk about that and like what we wanted to do about it, but, um, Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess my own perspective is that education is always helpful, um, and mm -hmm. people outside of the CCC community will be reading, the, maybe maybe reading this response. Um, if they are, um, do they will they get will they will they get information that they need to inform their own decision That's making, fair. thinking about you know security and privacy. That's fair. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, we can continue the conversation in the doc. Is there more, um, anybody wants to have more of a high bandwidth conversation here um, as opposed to asynchronously on the doc? I, I, I get your perspective, uh, uh, Chris. I think it'll, it's gonna be about finding the right balance there. Um, and to um, like what Fear's comment on the doc um, is like the longer the statement, the, the more it can come across is is like we are maybe overreacting or or um or as he put it overreacting but at the very least putting a lot of weight behind their statement um when when perhaps putting it in context as not holding a ton of weight for our specific use case may actually be more impactful yeah. uh, it's always better to be concise yeah okay I don't hear anybody else um, speaking up on this topic. So um, let, let's do continue um, having a productive conversation on the doc in comments and try to get um, it substantially complete by the end of this week. Okay, and then on the definitions though, um, to clarify what was mentioned before, um, it has been pointed out that the term attestation in uh, supply chain uh, management um, and I think the examples given were all in statements by the the, the U.S. government. 
um, that um, refer to attestations. I think the key part of the definition um, and in the, um, I guess I can pop it up on the screen for people that aren't uh, clicking through. Um, they seem to be using the second um, definition that the that NIST has provided, um, which I'm showing here. Um, I think we all discuss it as the first, which is the process of a digital signature with measurements. Like that is what attestation evidence is. Um, and in some cases, uh, a lot of aspects of attestation, attestation results as well. However, uh, they have explicitly chosen the second statement or the second definition, which is, I think, critically the based on a decision aspect of it. Um, and depending on the interpretation there, uh, this could rule out some of the, the ways that we use the term attestation. I, I uh, My first impression is that it, it doesn't necessarily do so. If we're talking about attestation results, then I mean, it, it mixes in attestation evidence and measurement values and or measurement reference measurements and endorsement values. And the endorsement values are a decision uh, effectively. Um, so I, I, I don't necessarily see the direct conflict um, between uh, the use of this in, um, in software supply chain uh, management or supply chain management uh, and our definition. Does someone um, have a, a, a counter? I wish Hank were here because he's the he's very um, he's he's been struggling with this issue in his his interactions with other communities. Um, I think he's been the main the main voice on this topic. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, in the Slack channel, I saw him uh, commenting it on this morning. I. Um, yeah, I wish you were here as well. Um, I'm sorry, who, who, um, someone else was speaking up? Yeah, Thomas here. I think, you know, the second one based on decision and means that there's a policy there, right? So, and it looks like it could fit with attestation results, but uh, not with endorsement, with an attestation, with an appraisal policy um, um, there. So, you know, <clears throat> it's, on, it's on a different angle. Uh, I've, I think the first one, you know, would uh, the, the first definition would fit very well with attestation evidence. The second might come out of a verifier, but it's not necessarily so. So I don't see a lot of uh, conflicting thing, and, and especially I don't I don't think that endorsements are part of that because endorsements are just uh, static um, assertions made by the supply chain, right? In in the RATS architecture. They are not uh, um, at all um, to be conflated with policy. Uh, I think it makes you take decisions on on, on processing uh, evidence. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think I missed the, the 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 point being made in the last part. Um, could you could you the point, uh, is, the point that I was trying to make is sort of. Uh, um, Taking your 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 assertion about uh, the conflation with uh, with endorsements and sort of breaking it down, and I think it's not it's it's appraisal policy there that is uh, a thing that makes you take decision based on evidence, right? So the issue of a statement looks like sure. a decision uh, rather than so. So yeah. So what I'm hearing is that while endorsement values may technically be a decision made by somebody in the the scheme of attestation the actual end decision is what may matters the most which is the appraisal um not the endorsement mm, that, that's yeah. what i'm and, and what i'm saying is that the endorsements are not are not decisions right they are assertions about something properties of uh, of the root of trust or whatever um you know identity uh, of the attester they are you know things that the supply chain can vouch for a specific device. Right? The color of the device, for example, is, is one endorsed value that could come from the supply chain. But it's not a decision, right? It's, it's, there's a, an appraisal policy that takes rep values, endorsed values, endorsements, evidence, and you know, 
uh, spits mm -hmm. out a statement. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I hear what you're coming from. Um, based on the in the context of this statement, though, it's the decision uh, that fulfill that fulfillment of specific specified requirements has been demonstrated. Like mm -hmm. what you are endorsing with endorsement values is that a collection of of measurements has been met that that some entity has decided is it, it means something. Uh, I no, <laughs> I think it's appraisal policy that makes that. Thing. Yeah, no, I I I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, um, Usama. Yeah, I, I had a question regarding uh, your statement, T3. You, you mentioned that they are using the second definition. So I just wanted to clarify, did you mean the IAB or did you mean the supply chain community? The supply chain community. Um, like, like I said, I, I kind of view this as a separate uh, okay. topic from the IAB uh, response. Um, right. However, right. Uh, I did just here in the meeting, I, I'm seeing this differently. This is not the case that, that uh, this definitions page has two definitions and the supply chain community has selected one. Um, it's that the supply chain community created a definition and this definition page is reflecting it. Um, the source for this is the um, supply chain um, executive <clears throat> order um, yeah. that, that has come out, not the other way around. That, that's correct. That was also my comment on the list that the statement, the response statement seems to suggest the former while it's the reverse. So basically, this NIST has just put down this definition and mentioned the source that this comes from there. And there comes my next question. Has actually has somebody actually read the document which is stated there after attestation? If you see, there is a document in the uh, ISO IEC, exactly this one. So this asked me to pay um, like 100 bucks for this, but I, I just wanted to ask if somebody has in the in the call has actually read this document. I, I have not looked at it. Has anybody else? No, not me. Nope. No. Um, my my under uh, sorry, Yogesh, go ahead. I haven't looked at it as well. I wanted to say something, but I will wait for Usama to complete here. Yeah. yeah. So 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 uh, I'm almost done. So so I was just saying that this is the definition which comes from the software supply chain community. That's why it's basically tailored towards their perspective, which is that whether the requirements for the software producer are actually fulfilled or not. So by by this, this is what they call as uh, attestation. And uh, they, they issue a statement based on this, that whether the requirements were fulfilled or not, then there are three categories, as you see in the screen. That's the first party attestation. If the software producer itself gave this statement, it's the first party attestation. If the software purchaser did that, then it's a second party. And if some independent third party did it, so it's the third party attestation. So the whole thing basically comes from the supply chain community. Yep. And that's why it's uh, not very clear to me to, to, to what we are trying to say in the CCC statement, because this comes from there and they are using it because it makes sense that it's all tailored toward their perspective. Software producer, software purchaser, independent third party whether the requirements are fulfilled. And the ambiguous thing in this is that the requirements, so what are these requirements now? The requirements in their case basically is the secure software development practices because they, they follow that kind of scheme. And now what are these software development, secure software development practices? They can be anything. So so, so uh, th that's why I'm a bit curious to, to, to learn more about what do they actually call as these secure software development practices. But in, if yeah. anybody on the list or in your context has actually read, I would be very interested in discussing with him uh, what- Yeah, um, you know, some, I, can, I can shed some light. Actually, I, you covered pretty much 70% uh, of us, what I was going to say been following up, been active contributor, contributor to the supply chain security group as well. Sure, so sure. the attestation is kind of a make a quality statements about in the supply chain security world, it is a quality statement about a software product. So you have, uh, as, as Osama mentioned, the, the statement can be made by the issuer or a third party or by the consumer. 
and then the statement can be anything there are in 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 toto world there are particular levels of uh, statements so at the level 1 you could have a basic code inspection done code review done and in the level 3 it could be like uh, is the software uh, build reproducible do you have reproducible build practice steps and embedded in your release so that anybody can in the downstream can verify that it is exactly what you claim so there are there are multiple things but the moral of the story is the term attestation is a colliding term between rats world and the attestation mm -hmm. coming from the supply chain security world and they have it has to coexist and it needs to be used in the right context so maybe the ib is aware of the attestation context on the uh, supply chain world but it is not it is not aware of that this uh, word attestation has a different meaning when we talk in in the context of rats so to, two comments on that that one um so from what i'm seeing here in the actual uh iso iec 17000 uh document and based on what you're saying yogesh yeah. um that this term attestation is really more akin to the endorsement values in the rats model does that seem yes. right? Yes, that's sort of correct. Yes. Okay. And then in the IAB statement, do we have any indication that they are conflating the two uh, meanings of the word? Um, they, they are responding to um, software that I think is using like, our notion of attestation policy. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I believe, yes, that, that is yes. correct. But the only yeah. reason that paragraph exists is that, um, is that Hank when he deals with people from other communities, um, uh, tells us that they get very confused about this issue. And so to the extent that we're making a statement that might be read by people in those other communities, he was keen to make sure that uh, the disambiguation took place. So uh, I, I guess I wanted to make, make a point that um, our views on what this means are not as important as um, understanding whether or not there are other communities that get confused about our use of the term attestation. And um, so my, my method um, for figuring that out is to send this statement out to a few people from other communities and say, you know, is this an issue um, and, uh, or not? Um, and if we, if we can all do that and just sort of reach out to people from these other communities, which could be the software supply chain or in general, the compliance people who are responsible for compliance, we may be um, we may get some information that can help tune um, whether we say something and what we say. Okay, that makes sense. Um. Any other thoughts? Uh, you guess you still have your hand up. Did you have more to add? No, I will just bring it down. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if, if I, I think that that's valuable, uh, Chris, um, to uh, Usama's point before, um, you know, the the like talking about when we talk about like the first and second definition on NIST, um, I think it's a bit um, uh, perhaps uh circular or pointing to the wrong place in the the tree of citations um because I, I think that the nist is a collection of places where other people have defined uh, the word uh, clarifying what we mean um, when we say attestation uh, based on what you're saying i think it makes sense um but we should really focus on uh what we mean um, um and maybe less on what other people mean Sure. But we can we can continue the, the IAB response discussion in the, in the doc. Um, I, I, this, I can see it's going to be tricky to uh, um, walk a fine line um, to make yeah. sure that everybody's points of view are uh, reflected here. So um, apologies well, in advance if I don't get it quite right. But I, please I, keep I don't, on providing input. I think it's like going to have to draw a line in the sand where you're not going to be able to uh, meet what everybody wants this response to be because I think people have different ideas um, will have to find an approach that has uh, you know enough compromise to to have people feel like they're the, the right state the right things are at least being um, 
you know, the most important things, I guess, are being reflected. Okay, um, and then as far as separate from the IAB response, um, do we want to, um, as an industry, try to take it upon our, as an industry group, to try to um, push for some um, either consolidation or at least uh, mapping of terms between the supply chain world and confidential computing? Hank's, Hank's not here, but from what I gathered, uh, his answer would probably be yes. Um, anybody else feel strongly on this? I I, I don't feel strongly, but I, I feel like certainly the supply chain world bumps into the confidential computing world, right? It, yeah. it feeds the confidential computing world. So we're, it, this is the, the, the frequency at which the... The terminology conflicts confusing people it's only going to grow over time i don't know whether mm -hmm. you know our our this ccc attestation saying is you know the appropriate place to drive propose whatever you know some common terminology or what have you but um or aligning the terminology but it does feel like it does feel like an issue that's going to affect us more and more over time and it, it, whatever we could do uh, that makes sense given the charter of what we all feel like we're here to accomplish, mm -hmm. you know, would be goodness. And, and perhaps the, the overlap is nil. So there's, you know, we note it in the notes and say it's an issue and bold it in red and say, hey, if anybody out there, you know, what, you know has, has got um, something they can do to, to make it better or um, or whether we think that's some, some element of, of improving the world is within the charter of, of, of this attestation sake. Um, but it doesn't feel like it's going to go away, and 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 it's you know we we will all be impacted impacted by it more and more, and it's the kind of thing where the it's you know it's a big it's it's not something that can be changed quickly. It'll take time, socializing, you know, changing mm -hmm. terminology. You know, it's it's, it's a it'll you know it, to accomplish it. I suspect is a, is a multi year journey kind of thing. Um, so. And those are my thoughts. Just a, um, a quick thought, um, you know, to the extent that there isn't anything on the CCC site with terminology around attestation, um, it might be worthwhile just to, you know, not even, you know, even before we get to comparisons with other communities, but just to clarify terms um, uh, or it maybe, you know, maybe we're delegating to rats, but, uh, you know, there are important T's that don't use rats. Um, so uh, I'm not totally clear that we can just sort of point to some other set of definitions and say, we're happy with these. I, I, I thought that we've, we've um, at least verbally on a few occasions in my recollection, this group here is, has agreed to align on the IETF RATS architecture document terminology. Um, I, I don't know if there's anything official uh, about that, but I, I just as we've discussed different topics in the past, it's been a common thing that we've done yeah i i i agree with that um assessment like while i don't think we've made any kind of statements around the the, the any of like the other um documents created by rats like we've discussed them um and how they relate to various things but for our own like within this the sig at the very least um, discussion, um, we did decide explicitly um, to standardize around the terminology in the RATS architecture document um, to a, as a means to kind of bridge the gap uh, for industry discussions. So I see hands up uh, from um, Usama and Yugesh. Are those, are those yeah. new hands? Yeah. Usama? Um... I think Osama's hand was up first, I believe. I think it was your guest first, but but uh, okay. Oh. So uh, I completely agree with Keith. I think we, we we also in one of the meetings we had a lot of discussion. Like somebody proposed this token, and then there was a question: What exactly is token? Is this an evidence or is this what? Then somebody proposed payload. So there was a question: Okay, so what's the definition of payload? And then we explicitly agreed upon. I can also find the 
in the minute of uh, minutes meetings. So there was an explicit discussion around that. And then we decided, yes, we will only follow rats. That's, uh, that's the terminology to be used. And I also remember that CCC has actually organized also some, some webinars where I think it was Dave Taylor who, who gave a, uh, about the rats terminology. So there have been some awareness, uh, such kind of webinars and some literature around, uh, around that. And the white papers explicitly point to rats architecture terminology. So yeah, I think it's common in the community. So, so I will, I would like to have a counter example when you say that some TEs are not using rats. So I would really like to know which TE is not using the rats terminology. That's something which is not really clear to me. CVSNP. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you are saying that SCVSNP is not using the rats terminology. Uh, well, I'm, I, I don't believe I, I don't believe they're following the rats um, arc. I, I think they have a different approach, um, which I don't know. I mean, is... the approach approach has nothing to do with the terminology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if it could be mapped, so so uh, I don't find any any counter example like. In terms okay. of, let's say like four or five months ago, or, or I think maybe more months ago, like they didn't also have any uh, anything like mapping specifically to rats terminology. That's something that we initiated like more than a year ago, I think. And uh, on the rats working group, I had a question like, what does this map to in the SEX? That's more than two years ago. And there was no response. And then we started uh, uh, investigating this. And after some time, like two years, we, we come up with this that, okay, so this is what it means. So it's just a matter of translating their terminology into RATS terminology. It's not uh, that, that Intel also initially had that. So, so Intel, after our work that they also had for TDX, some, something that is kind of representing the, the, the RATS thing at a very high level, but we did it, explore it to a very deep level. And for each, starting from the coating enclave, provisioning certification enclave, blah, 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 everything. Okay, how does this fit in the terminology? Yep. And by by asking a counter example i actually meant that somebody else is let's say is actually saying uh, let's say we use not this terminology we use a completely different standard terminology which is let's say xyz whatever so so i, I don't think that's the case they use their, their own terminology just like intel uses let's say code for the evidence so i wouldn't call that a counter example that's something terminology which is uh, intel uh, arm uses token i wouldn't say that they are contradicting, let's say, the, the, the RATS terminology, they are just using their own convenient words to represent what was called in the standard as evidence. So having code instead of evidence is not a counterexample, in my opinion. Fair. You guys? Yeah. I, uh, where is Oh, it? sorry. Sorry, right, Chris, go ahead. It'd be great to get uh, AMD involved in this forum. I, I, I don't notice them as members. Um, have you reached out to them? Sorry, are you asking SNP? I'm just asking if anybody has reached out to um, AMD to become a member of the CCC. I I am pretty sure that the board has. Um, I don't know what their response was, but um, I'm fairly confident they have. Yeah, in, a, in another conversation I have having with some AMD folks, I have as well requested them to join this group, especially the CCC attestation SIG because they have some attestation interest as well. But uh, I don't know whether they will be on board or not. Uh, regarding the attestation, yes, um, there is a conflict. Uh, I think we should clarify in our CCC stuff that we are following RATS terminology, just to be clear. And I'm assuming that when we go to RATS, all these definitions are crystal clear defined so that there is no confusion and ambiguity, I suppose. Um, and uh, regarding your question about reaching out to supply chain security and clarifying our definition, uh, nothing wrong in that as well, I, I believe, uh, because this attestation word is used heavily in the supply chain world as well. It is. Yes, so nothing wrong with that, yeah. Thank nothing you. wrong with reaching out is what you're yes. saying. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, so I think we will need to put together um, a you know, our, our Thoughts on, you know, what the current state of affairs is, how the map, how the terms uh, could map to each other, 
um, and a proposal going forward, whether it be that one or both of the industries change, you know, their terminology or um, that it it is, you know, clearly put in context whenever it's it's mentioned or or whatever before we we just you know reach out yeah, craig is this really because because the terminology conflict is between what we're hanging our hat on ietf rats architecture you know doc and mm -hmm. the supply chain industry so is this really something that ccc attestation sig should be you know doing with with the supply chain folks, or should this basically should should we be asking the IETF rats architect architecture folks, you know, essentially, hey, you know, we as one of many consumers of this stuff are having this issue. Can 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 you guys work at aligning or doing a mapping? Um, I I think that's fair. Um, us as an industry consortium, though, are the ones that are that would feel the pain from this disconnect, and I think it's 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 on us whether it be this SIG or maybe the TAC um to to push for um, some sort of alignment um, whether or not we're reaching out to the different groups that have the the, the terminology the standards groups or us reaching out directly to another in industry group in supply chain management like that's a good point maybe it should be through the the standards groups well yeah i, I could almost see it as a i, I just Ultimately, we shouldn't, you know, if, if it's about aligning RATS architecture terminology and supply chain, you know, groups terminology, we shouldn't be operating, you know, on behalf of the RATS folks, yeah. you know, negotiating mappings, right? That's not our place. That's true. We, and so I, 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 you know, perhaps a, a, a next step here is to basically, you know, reach out to both of those parties and say, Look, you know, you're causing us pain because we have to deal with both. And look at, you know, it's obviously causing other folks pain. But we won't speak for them. And, um, you know, what are what are your plans to to align, or what are your thoughts here? And you know, perhaps we want to, you know, if they get some conversations going, participate. But in but, uh, yeah, just yeah. I, I think that that's that's completely fair, uh, Greg. I, I do think before we reach out to those two groups that we should clearly articulate, um, you know, what we view the conflict as and the confusion that it that it can uh, cause, um, so that to to kind of start that conversation um, with yes. that context. Yeah, I, I think that'd be excellent. I mean, that makes total sense. Unless someone is willing to pay hundred bucks, I would suggest why not invite someone from their group to present in our SIG. And then we see what exactly do they mean, because none of at least the meeting attendees have read that document and we are just speculating the, the things or otherwise, if you have in your company, someone who is from the supply chain community, he would, he would actually know in what context are these terms used and so on at a station, maybe ask someone from, from your supply chain uh, community to 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 present maybe one presentation we don't have anything for the next week so maybe it's it's something that I'm, I'm, we understand I'm, better and then I, i'm not sure that that um that detail analysis is necessary there's obviously confusion we're feeling it um and that seems like a good starting point you know expressing you know what's available to us and why we're confused and um yeah if if there's some magic behind a hundred dollar document maybe Part of the, the the mitigation over time is they unlock that hundred dollar document. And, but is this also that doc? So I just opened this up in a like private browsing window, and it didn't require me to log in with any kind of credentials from my company. I just posted the the link in the chat. If somebody else, uh, maybe Usama, since you were, I'm um, saying that what you had found before was asking for for payment. If you could check to see if that is viewable by you, because I think this is this is what they're referring to. I can click the link and see it. Yeah, it seems to work for me. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same one as the one which uh, asked me to, I put it in the chat, the link I was previously, which is the actual reference document there, but I uh, I will check this link. Okay, because I, I think this is on the ISO website, uh, the, the document being referenced, it might be just be, um, instead of being a like printable PDF form, it's a 
web browsable and they might not charge for that. Um, so I, I, I added it to the notes doc as well, this link. Yeah, thanks. All right, well, we are out of time. Um, um, any of the other chairs um, available to chair the next meeting? I think it will be on the 7th of November. I think there's a problem. It's a conflict with ATF. So okay. I, I Should we to... skip one? Perhaps the next one then would be the 21st. Is that too close to to any other conflicts or holidays? Um, all right, who, who is left? Uh, look here um i think of the co-chairs it's you and i left on the call uh tomas okay so i would take it <laughs> okay thank you all yes. right um and if you look back on the last meeting there's a number of topics that have been proposed that are listed there yeah um, that's right. that that perhaps we can get into yeah all right thank okay. you everybody cheers bye-bye Great discussion. Bye.